Assalamu alaikum and good evening. You are watching Hamsab TV and I am Munib Hamid with the news. Army Chief calls for widening scope of Madrasa education. Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa has called for widening the scope of education at Madrasa's religious seminars to enable the students to play a more positive and productive role in society. Speaking at a seminar on human resource development opportunities and challenges here on Thursday, he categorically stated that he was not against religious seminars. The Army Chief said more religious seminars were established in Balochistan compared to modern and quality schools for local students during the past four decades. Only religious education is being imparted to the students at all these seminars and thus the students are left behind in the race for development. Intruders traced on radar will not be able to go back, warns Air Chief. Chief of Air Staff Air Chief Marshal Sohail Man on Thursday warned that the violators of Pakistan's airspace will not be spared, be it an enemy aircraft or a US drone. The Air Chief said we will soon launch a new satellite. The country will be able to send astronauts into space within the next two years. We are also working on unmanned drones and new unmanned aerial vehicles, which will be manufactured in the next 18 months. Aman said that when the United States drones had violated the Pakistani airspace, the Air Force had told the U.S. authorities that their drones would be knocked down if they entered the country's airspace again. SC orders Punjab government to complete Orange Line train, setting aside LHC suspension. The Supreme Court on Friday set aside the decision of Lahore High Court to halt construction of the Orange Line Metro train project. The much-awaited judgment was announced by Justice Ijazul Ahsan on the multi-billion dollar train project almost eight months after the bench reserved its verdict on the matter in April. Justices Ijaz Afzal Khan, Sheikh Azmat Saeed Makbul Babar and Mazhar Alim Khan Mia Khail were also part of the larger bench hearing the case today. The bench had taken up identical petitions filed by the Punjab government, National Engineering Services Pakistan, Punjab Mass Transit Authority, Lahore Development Authority and Civil Society Network against the August 19, 2016 Lahore High Court judgment suspending construction work on the Orange Line Metro train within 200 feet of 11 heritage sites in the provincial capital. Sadiq Khan brings London is open. Invitation to Karachi visit Skye's mausoleum. Mayor of London Sadiq Khan during his visit to Karachi on Friday said that he was proud of his Pakistani heritage, adding that it had been a privilege to have visited the country. After arriving in the city, he visited the mausoleum of Qaid e Azam amid strict security where he offered Fatiha and laid down flower rats on the grave of the founder of Pakistan. Talking to media later, he reiterated his invitation to London, saying Britain's capital was open to everyone for education, business or tourism. Congress suspends a year for comments about Modi. Senior Congress leader Mani Shankar Iyer was suspended on Thursday from the primary membership of the party for calling Prime Minister Narendra Modi a niche army, a vile man, a remark that Mr Modi said was aimed at his humble origins. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi had pulled up Mr. Ayer during the day and asked him to apologize, a move that was seen as an attempt to cap the political fallout of the controversial remarks in the first phase of assembly elections in Gujarat. The BJP and Prime Minister Modi, who was campaigning in Gujarat, had invoked Mr. Ayer's remarks to target the Congress through the day. Palestinians observe day of rage after Trump's decision on Jerusalem. Furious Palestinians have called for a day of rage on Friday as protests spread against the U.S. President Donald Trump's widely criticized recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Hamas called for fresh protests after the main weekly Muslim prayers on Friday. A senior Palestinian official said late Thursday that U.S. Vice President Mike Pence was not welcome in Palestine following the policy shift which ended decades of U.S. ambiguity on the status of the disputed city. U.S. Vice President to visit ME explain U.S. move. 
U.S. Vice President Mike Pence heads to the Middle East next week for talks with Israeli and Arab leaders on President Donald Trump's decision to shift his country's embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Mr. Pence will visit Israel from December 17 to 19 as part of a regional trip that will also take him to Palestinian Authority and Egypt. In Israel, he will also address the Knesset. The first senior U.S. official to do so is Vice President George W. Bush in 2008, said in official Israeli announcement. Vice President Pence, who strongly supports the decision, said at dinner in Washington on Wednesday night that the move showed President Trump's commitment to Israel. Erdogan's landmark Greece visit gets off to rocky start. Greece and Turkey on Thursday agreed to work on confidence-boosting measures after a rocky start at a landmark two-day state visit of Athens by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan, making the first visit to Greece by a Turkish head of state in 65 years, had earlier angered his host with talk of revising borders and complaints about Greece's treatment of its Muslim minority. We agree to resume talks on confidence building and security measures, Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras said at a news conference after a long meeting with Erdogan. Britain and EU reach historic deal on Brexit divorce terms. Britain and the EU reached a historic deal on Friday on the terms of the Brexit divorce after Prime Minister Theresa May rushed to Brussels for early morning talks. The European Commission said it recommends sufficient progress have been made by Britain on separation issues, including the Irish border, Britain's divorce bill and citizens' rights. The agreement paves the way for EU leaders at a summit on December 14 to 15 to open the second phase of Brexit negotiations, covering trade talks and a transit period. Britain voted in June 2016 to become the first state to leave the EU after more than four decades of membership. But the talks have been slow moving and often acrimonious so far. Catalans march in Brussels to wake up Europe. A sea of around 45,000 pro Catalonia protesters demonstrated in Brussels on Thursday to show support for the region's deposed president, Carl Point Gomont, and urged the EU to support its drive for independence from Spain. Demonstrators chanted, Wake up Europe! and waved Catalonia's red, yellow and blue Estelada separatist flag as they marched past the European Union's headquarters in Belgium capital. We cannot abandon our president, who is in exile here as Sony Lenas, 59. A protester wearing a flag over his shoulder said, We are here to continue the struggle for our independence and to ask for freedom of our political prisoners. Hamas leader calls for a new uprising against Israel in wake of U.S. decision on Jerusalem. The top leader of Palestinian Islamist movement Hamas has called for a new uprising against Israel in the wake of U.S. President Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Ismail Haniyeh spoke to his followers in the Gaza trip on Thursday and called the U.S. decision an aggression on our people and a war on our sanctuaries. We want the uprising to last and continue to let Trump and the occupation regret this decision. Foreign exchange reserves soar to $21 billion. Foreign exchange reserves have jumped to $21 billion after the country received $2.5 billion. It raised through auction of bond on the international market. The State Bank of Pakistan on Thursday reported that the reserves held by it rose to 14000 883 billion after receiving bond auction proceeds on December 5. In fact, the SPP reserves during the week ending November 30 decreased by $887 million to $12.660 billion due to external debt and other official payments. State Bank directs banks to adopt pay park cards. State Bank of Pakistan on Thursday asked all banks to expedite adopting PayPal cards in order to ensure the safety and security of payment instruments and consumers' money. After the recent Habib Bank ATM scam, which resulted in the loss of 10.2 million rupees and a sense of insecurity emerged among debit card holders in general, SBP came out with the suggestion to prevent loopholes in the banking system that may lead to such frauds. 
while highlighting SBP's full support for pay per card adoption of by all banks. Deputy Governor State Bank Mr. Jamil Ahmed encouraged the banks to devise strategies for increasing their uptake of pay per cards. Weather Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country.